As we start this journey, I think the first place to begin is looking at anatomy. And I'm reminded by a statement that James Syriax, the father of orthopedic medicine, told us is that diagnosis is nothing more than applying one's knowledge of anatomy to the case. And I think that's vital in this case, that if you have a firm understanding of the anatomy, you certainly can develop your own assessment scheme and go through a diagnostic process. So therefore, the first step in a correct diagnosis and management of a hip pathology is knowledge of your functional anatomy, which would then lead you to an accurate patient history and hearing from the patient's own words what the case may be, observing the patient, and then going through a thorough examination. When we look at the anatomy of the hip joint, the hip can be divided really into three separate compartments. Almost think of it as layers, where we have a central compartment or deep layer in which we have the acetabulum, the lunate cartilage or articular cartilage about the uh, acetabulum, the ligament teres, and the femoral head. Basically, our bony geometry makes up this deep layer or central compartment. Our peripheral compartment is sort of working our way out peripherally, where we have the femoral neck, the acetabular rim, the synovial membrane, and the capsule surrounding the joint. And then our peritrochanteric compartment, or our most superficial compartment, is the area between the iliotibial band and the proximal femur, and that's where our musculature lies. We'll discuss each of these layers as we go through this journey looking at hip anatomy.